With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at americanstandardair.com slash electrification. American Standard, built to a higher standard. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. For those in the market for flavor, there's Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, a flavorful drink that's a modern twist on a Mexican street classic with four vibrant and refreshing flavors, pineapple, watermelon, hibiscus, and cucumber lime, made with a splash of real fruit juice. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas are perfect for any fiesta, small or big. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, boldly authentic, Vibrantly flavorful. Drink responsibly. Modelo Spike that was frescas flavored beers imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hibiscus contains juice only for color. All right, places, please. The Daily Mix Show is on deck. Guitars plugged in. Drums ready to go. Chickens. They're clucking. Other animals. And action. This is the Daily Mix Show on The Rock with Taryn Daly and Steve Miggs. While listening to the Daily Mix Show, please refrain from any unnecessary finger gesturing. 99.9 KISW. Good morning, Rockaholics, and happy Tuesday. Steve Miggs, Danny, and Sarah, I know we're all still recovering a bit from our morning show boot camp. Yeah. A radio convention. Sarah's voice sounds much better today. Well, let's check it. Give us the me, me, me's. Me, 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 me. Yeah, it does, actually. Yeah. I wanted to tell you, though, I forgot about this this moment at, at in our hotel room. I brought a personal item with me that Sarah had never seen before. She'd never seen one of these. Oh, man. Should we guess? If, mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can't say it on the air, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, is it at the sex variety? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, an eggplant. You brought an eggplant with you. I did not bring an eggplant. I brought, and I was just wondering if you guys used these or not, because Sarah didn't know what it was. Underwear. A, a tongue scraper. <laughs> a tongue scraper? A tongue scraper. Oh, yeah. You know what a tongue scraper is? Yeah, but I usually just use my toothbrush. Well, yeah. you can do and that, just too. brush my tongue. I don't need to have two things for my mouth. But the tongue scraper is great, because you can, like... You- no, not that, that looks really bad, but you can reach really far back. <laughs> did, did you, did, did Sarah try it? I didn't let her try oh, my tongue scraper. Yeah, she didn't offer it. It was kind of rude, <laughs> but she showed me how it worked. It's like, yes, Taryn, thank you. I know what a tongue scraper is, yeah. but she's like, look at this, and like sticks out her tongue and then puts it far back. And then did she make eye contact while doing that? Yes. Okay, that's kind of weird. You and can't then, look at somebody while you're scraping your own tongue. I just, I love, I think a tongue scraper changes the mouth game. It really does. All right. There you go. <laughs> like, like, Steve looked like he was like I'm contemplating that for a second. I had to think about it, but I'm like, you know, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. Like, no, Taryn. I've been living my life without a tongue scraper, and I've been doing just fine. Are you? But, you know, you haven't even experienced the other side of things yet, Steve, so how do you even know? All right, well, maybe, you know, Christmas isn't that <laughs> oh far away. Or why don't you just get us all one, then? Uh, you know what? I just might. Are they are they reusable or you get yeah like- you get like it's like a, the one I have is metal uh, yeah wow it's yeah. great though yeah scrape that whole tongue you ever hard scrape tongue. it so hard that like maybe you cut it no it's that sharp I'm not that aggressive it's not that sharp I mean it has like a like a blunt edge but it's you're not, not gonna knife, Steve. you're not gonna cut your tongue <laughs> you're off not a knife. you're not cutting layers off of your tongue I just use my shape my razor to <laughs> scrape my tongue <laughs> am I doing it wrong oh. well let's see your tongues guys talk about mouthfeel let me see your tongues. Mm. They do look very clean. Now Looking good. Now I'm nervous to show you my tongue. Okay, I like how you're only showing us like one quarter of your tongue. I still taste like tequila, okay? <laughs> That's a George issue, not our problem. <laughs> it is time to inform the rockaholics. Knowledge is power. So give us five-ish minutes <laughs> and we'll give you uh, 
some interesting stuff you can talk about at work. This is the Daily Mix Download, a.k.a. the DMD. Here's your daily dose of doings happening in the world. And the DMD is brought to you by Palace Law. And uh, today's your day to enjoy yourself a filet mignon there, Danny. Yeah. It's National Filet Mignon Day. All right. I think that's always when, when I was eating steaks. That was my favorite of all the steaks. Medium rare, please. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And let's talk about the Seattle Mariners because outfielder uh, Victor Robles can now buy as many filet mignons as he'd like because he just signed a two-year contract extension worth. $9.75 million with $9 million option for the 2027 season as well. They picked him up from Washington. He'd been great for the Mariners, hitting 303, seven doubles, three home runs in 42 games, and just I mean, just a spirit inside that clubhouse. Like He just has such great energy and is just bringing some good times to the team and definitely helping them with this, this recent resurgence. He's been playing really well. Plus, they need to mic him up all the time because he was on Sunday Night Baseball, which was on ESPN. The announcers had him mic'd with a little earpiece while he's playing the game. And the audio of this is just so great because he's in the outfield playing early in the game. And the announcers are asking him questions about his pets. And, well, he's got a rather interesting pet. Uh, Victor, we asked the fans if they'd like to ask you a question. Here comes one from Ben. It said, can you talk a little bit about your pet monkeys at home? <laughs> yes, the man has a pet monkey, apparently, or multiple monkeys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's a, great, that's a great question, man. So growing up, I was watching monkeys on TV, and I saw, like, how fun they do in jumping around. And I described myself. I, I looked monkey, and I, I saw myself on monkeys. And I just said, sorry, guys, I have to make the play. <laughs> Yeah, it's right in the middle of it. Somebody hit the ball right through him and he just starts running. He's like, hold on, guys. I like that he apologized, yeah. too. Sorry. <laughs> Made the catch and threw a cannon back to the infield. Wait, so do you A have, little bit too hard. Sorry, mate. Do you have monkeys running around the house? No, they have their own house. Oh, my gosh. Wow. His pets have their own house. <laughs> I need to step on my game at Camp Cash. Does Amazon have to deliver things to the monkey house? And do they answer the door like, hey. Guys, there's another scam happening. And they texted me, but I knew better. The Washington State Department of Transportation is warning if you're a good-to-go customer, there is a scam where they're hitting you up about a fake toll bill notice, and it comes via text oh. message. And it's a different website than the actual good-to-go website. That's the number one indicator. Wait, so I, I filled out all the information oh, and no, sent my Steve. money. Yeah. <laughs> It Kidding. has the WSDOT logo on it. It has a link to pay your fees. Also, the, I saw how high the fee was that it was trying to get me to pay. How much? It was like one hundred and seventeen dollars. I'm like, my good to go is usually like four dollars. So you, I knew you it got was it fake. too, Daddy. Oh yeah, mine was saying it was six hundred and ninety dollars. <laughs> Where the hell are you going? Man? Apparently everywhere. <laughs> so just be aware, you know, rockaholics. Like when, when is when's there traffic? I want to get in that good to go lane and have it jack up the prices. I will say that it did give me the thing of like, oh, maybe I should go to the actual website and make sure. So I went to the actual website and I did actually owe money, but it wasn't that much. How much was it? it was like six bucks. Oh, yeah. okay, that's a yeah. slight difference. Maybe they just put the dot in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're getting some text messages about scraping tongues. Oh. Scraping your tongue is like washing your feet. It's optional, but definitely a game changer. Mm. Another person okay. says tongue scrapers are game changers. That's from Lakewood Larry. Look all these hey. clean tongues. As far as weather, we are going to hit a high of 71 degrees today. It's going to be cloudy. That is the DMD, and that's what's up. We are obviously still recovering from San Diego in one way or another. Everybody looks like they're thriving today, though. Man, I know. I, I feel like I'm struggling way more than I was yesterday. Really? Oh, yeah. It's always, it takes a couple of days before the hangover really kicks in. Oh, you're tricking me then, because you look, you look like you're just all sparkly and happy. Oh, good. <laughs> well, one thing that I did learn is that I work with a couple of thieves. Now, who on this show has sticky fingers? You will find out at 620. The Daily Mix Show. There are any number of reasons you might consider selling your home. That's where an agent who is a Realtor comes in to navigate the process to sell your home in a way that's right for you. Because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. 
Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. While we were off at our morning radio convention in San Diego, I learned that I work with a couple of thieves. Uh Uh-oh. And this happened when we were out having Mexican food and we were getting ready to leave. But there was still margarita left in the pitcher of margaritas. It was the Stay Classy San Diego Rita. Yeah. Which had the Clase Azul tequila in it. That's why we were getting it. And then what, you know, we're fancy. Oh. <laughs> so, Steve Miggs, maybe you could walk us through what happened when there were still margaritas left in the margarita pitcher. Well, thankfully, somebody recorded it. So let's uh, let, let's go to the tape. Okay, we're still in San Diego Saturday night. Well, I was being I a little bitch, and I didn't finish my margarita. Now, I mean, I think on a scale of one to ten, where would you put Sarah? Ooh, at that point, I'd probably put her at like a six. A six. Now, where would you put Taryn? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my. At 12. Uh, yeah, because we almost lost you for the whole night. And it was not that late. It was like 8 p.m. when this was all going on, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I had to put little Taryn to bed. And then I got back up. <laughs> and it showed up unannounced. Like, I'm ready to go, guys. It was very much one of those things of like, stay in bed. We'll call you when we're ready. And then all of a sudden, Taryn's like, I'm back, bitches. I don't believe in FOMO. <laughs> all right. Didn't finish my margarita, and so Steve, like the homie, straight up stole my glass of margarita. And not only that, he he stole what? What, Steve? What'd you steal? Hey, 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 oh, hey! Oh, hey. Oh, I told you. I told you. There's a lot of a lot of chanting. A lot of chanting. A lot of chanting. Trip. I don't think Sarah and I communicated other than going hey, 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 hey. hey. the entire time. We'd just look at each other and just start chanting whatever it was. Oh, hey, hey, I didn't steal the margarita. We. Paid Oh, was there a little bit of a... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Some extra flavor in there. Well, we tell Sarah said I stole the margaritas. I didn't hear that in the background. Yeah. All right. Who's, who's cursing in the background? I don't know. And now we're just well, walking in. I didn't, I didn't steal the margaritas. We paid for the margaritas. <laughs> I yeah, just you, stole the... The, 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 the actual pitcher. Yes. And their glassware. Right. And we're walking the streets of San Diego. Which now listen back to it. I'm still stealing. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was just very uh, adamant about, hey, I paid for the actual liquid that's inside of that pitcher. Yeah. I don't want to come off like a thief. Yeah, you're entitled to that liquid. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to bring that pitcher back with me. It's a cheap plastic pitcher. Yeah. I know. I think, that, I think that's my favorite part is that the pitcher is nothing special. <laughs> no. It has the Padres logo on it and and uh, the, some kind of beer on it. <laughs> and it's falling apart. It's got cracks in it and Scratches. everything. It's nothing fancy. But it had our expensive margarita in it. And we're walking the streets of San Diego drinking. Which... I don't want to be like knowing that the guy who stole margaritas, like paid for the margaritas. <laughs> you just stole their f***ing pitch no, no, for you. Honestly, I, I love that. <laughs> just so you guys know, I saw a video recently on social media where they got a to-go box and they just poured the margarita into the to-go oh, box. Yeah. I mean, there are life hacks that exist. We don't have to no, thieve. We never thought about asking for our margarita to go. I don't think they would have given it to us. No. Though. It's just- illegal. <laughs> we were in San Diego. I was literally like screaming at Steve, like, dude, we're not in New Orleans. This isn't Vegas. Like, you're chugging from a margarita pitcher that's it's clearly not water. I think the highlight, though, was then we get close to the hotel and I'm just staring at a group of people who I thought were being lectured about something while drinking this picture. Turns out they were like on a tour for like a, a, a ghost tour. And they're all looking at us like we're just insane. Yeah, well, you guys probably looked like ghosts at that point in the night. Well, and all we kept saying was, hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. So, Migs and Sarah, you guys are criminals. No, hey, not me. Hey, hey, hey. But what about you, Rockaholics? 206-803-ROCK. What is the dumbest thing you have ever stolen? Give us a call now and tell us when you were a stupid criminal. Just like my friends, Sarah and Steve over here. Hey, 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 hey. 206-803-ROCK. We will take your calls after Lincoln Park. The Daily Mix Show. 
While in San Diego, Migs and Sarah stole a plastic pitcher from a bar. But it was not just the pitcher. It was the expensive margaritas inside. Hey, 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 hey. He stole the entire pitcher of margaritas. So, what about you? My favorite part about all that then was as it, by the end of it, I feel like that actually bonded me and Sarah. Like, she was very uh, pleased that I was able to, I was willing to steal something for her. Well, we know she loves a bad boy. Well, yes, and I didn't ah. want to chug it, so the fact that he just took it, it was amazing. He's a hero. Yeah, and It I, wasn't like a massive, like, crime operation. We just got up, <laughs> took it, and walked out <laughs> because we were sitting outside. So what about you, Rockaholics? What is the dumbest thing that you have ever stolen? 206-803-ROCK. Some of the texts that are coming in, one person says, I stole a blazer from my college's theater department when I was 21. It was too dark for my character, but it fit me well, so I never took it off and walked out with it. No one ever said anything. About 15 years ago, I gave it to my cousin when he needed a tie and jacket for an interview, and he still has it. Ooh, I like that. And our friend Rose in Tacoma texted and said, when I moved out at 18, my entire kitchen setup was uh, stolen piece by piece from restaurants like Sherry's, <laughs> Red Robin, Denny's. I wonder what, how, like... Those restaurants, I wonder what kind of like a storage facility or like storage room they have because they got to be replacing things like that all the time. Oh, I would imagine it happens like several times a day. Like even someone else texted and saying, I stole the Red Robin seasoning salt. I just love that stuff on my French fries. My girlfriend will never let me live that down. But we're pretty sure. Now, I hate saying that because I don't think they're encouraging people to steal it, but I think they kind of expect people will. I mean, I have I've stolen that seasoning salt before. Although I think now you can buy it in stores. Well, I'm still going to take it. It doesn't taste different. It doesn't taste the same. If you yeah. buy it at a Safeway, it doesn't taste the same. That's exactly true. I like this one. I stole a blue... Uh, Danny, you'll appreciate this yeah. one. I stole a blue French horn from a restaurant to impress a girl. A, a, bl- a blue okay. French horn? Do you get it? It's obviously... They're, they're, they're screwing with us. Yeah. Oh, she's clearly she not a fan. She doesn't get it. What does it mean? How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Oh, I don't watch that show. I'm sorry. Uh, you should. It's on Netflix now. Yes, you're missing out. It's one of the best sitcoms. It really is. And that's like a, it was like an iconic moment of how they got together, right? It, well, Spoiler alert. Yeah, well, not not the mother, but the Aunt Robin. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best part is that the entire show is about how I met your mother. It's literally just exploits of Ted banging a bunch of girls. Yeah, and at one point he used the French horn to yeah. kind of get with the girl. I think that's Ooh. in the first episode, actually. So is it? Watch, I, think, I believe so. And it keeps coming up throughout the entire yeah. episode. I mean, we're just spoiling for you. You don't even need to watch it anymore. I, I know, know the whole plot. Good. Yeah, you kind of get Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. What about you, Danny? <laughs> Honestly, with the, the seasoning type thing, that's when I, and Sarah knows this, when I used to get drunk, um, I <laughs> she was hard shaking her head at me. When I used to get drunk, for some reason, I would always steal the, the red chili pepper flakes from pizza restaurants, but not just the chili pepper flakes. Like, I would steal the entire shaker. So oh, so you wouldn't even grab like the individually wrapped ones that they have for people? No, of course not. I would just grab the whole shaker and I'd take them home. And for a while, we had like 25 of them. Well, you never know when you need, you know, extra chili flakes. Yeah, exact. Thank you. But 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 he's Danny. So then he's he's drunk. He has these chili flakes, and then he just he he sometimes opens them, throws them at people. Like he's just like <laughs> reckless, and it's so unnecessary. Yeah, the more we're around Danny, especially when he's drinking, he becomes Captain Chaos. I love it. <laughs> he does. He really does. But he looks like so quiet and kind of like I didn't do anything. No, he's crazy. All right, this text from one of our rock hogs at 206-803-ROCK feels like something stupid that I would do. I once stole an ice cream sandwich from a convenience store when I was drunk. I passed out wearing my coat, woke up with a melted ice cream sandwich. Oh, LOL. no. The ultimate that's, that's dagger. Karma. Yeah, that's you're karma. like, oh, I got this great thing. When I get home, because I love a good ice cream, anything when you're drunk. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a great way to end the night. Yeah. I'm going to eat the crap out of this ice cream sandwich and then... So, Steve, out of curiosity... Oh. I, I know that you stole your, you know, you stole that picture, you know, in, I guess it was for Sarah in her honor, whatever. Was it because, was Sarah the motivation or would you have stolen it without her motivation? I probably wouldn't have even thought of taking it if it wasn't for Sarah. But when what? she met, well, not that you're like the bad person and like the devil on my shoulder, but I didn't even think about the fact that we still had a bunch of margarita drink in that picture and it wasn't cheap. No. So it's like, oh yeah, we can't we can't leave without finishing this. But I think we're all ready to move on to our next adventure, and we're kind of done eating there. So it's like, all right, well, <laughs> she doesn't want to give up on this thing. We might as well just grab it and go. I'm pretty. This this was all Steve. I just want to say, everyone, this was all Steve. I literally was just like sipping my thing, and he was antsy. He's like, just give it to me, just give it to me, and then he. I gave it to him and then he just walks out. Oh no! Don't get me wrong. I got excited once the thought crossed our mind. Like I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Like we could be, we could be bad people. <laughs> Ooh. Like, 
Like, real bad. <laughs> real bad. Well, if the Rockaholics want to come be bad with us, KISW presents the Halloween Hullabaloo <laughs> on October 13th. Yeah, that's good. We're not, bad. We're not encouraging anybody to steal anything from the show, but we're going to be at the Showware Center in Kent. We're going to be watching Godsmack and Hailstorm, and those tickets are on sale now. You can't steal them, but you can buy them at KISW.com. Unless, unless you find them at a Mexican food restaurant in a picture. <laughs> <laughs> now we need somebody who is willing to take a shot at beating Steve. He's got a record of 222 wins, 65 losses, and 35 ties in 2024. 206-803-ROCK is the number to call, and we will play Beat Migs at 650. The Daily Migs Show. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing your firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. For those in the market for flavor, there's Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, a flavorful drink that's a modern twist on a Mexican street classic with four vibrant and refreshing flavors, pineapple, watermelon, hibiscus, and cucumber lime, made with a splash of real fruit juice. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas are perfect for any fiesta, small or big. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, boldly authentic, vibrantly flavorful. Drink responsibly. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas flavored beers imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hibiscus contains juice only for color. The Daily Mix Show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix, don't be a loser. Beat Mix, you're a loser. Who's ready to Beat Mix? I know Joe from Yelm is. Joe, are you there? I am here. I'm Sarah, your host, and it's time for you to get out of here, Steve. Bye-bye. For those playing at home, Joe has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I am ready. What chain uses the slogan, better ingredients, better pizza? Uh, Papa Murphy's. No. Uh, Pizza Hut. No. Domino's. No. What popular Pixar franchise is in the works for its fifth film? Toy Story. Correct. What South Asian country touches the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, and the Bay of Bengal? 
India. Correct. What is the nearest planet to the sun? Mercury. Yes. Rainier beer originated in what U.S. state? Washington. Correct. Who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? Uh, Mary Curie. Yes. Who plays Sarah Connor in The Terminator? Mm, Pass. According to Google, what's the city with the most diversity in terms of language? San Francisco. No. Uh, Portland. No. Oh, God. Um, Paris, France. No. (laughs) Joe, you got five correct. Damn it. (laughs) I honestly think you're totally going to kick yourself for the first question, too. Uh, I know it. You were so close. Can we all just acknowledge for a second, too, how much better Sarah's voice sounds today than yesterday? It does. I still feel like I don't sound great. And we'll see how I feel later on in the morning as my voice continues, you know. But I sound way better. <laughs> how did Major I just walk in on? <laughs> my beautiful voice. She's, oh, she okay. still sounds pretty sultry, though. I like it. A little raspy. Yeah. 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 Steve, are you ready? Yes! <laughs> I wonder why you lost your voice. And do not ask me to do that now. I don't even want to know what yes! it sounds like. Yes! What chain uses the slogan, better ingredients, better pizza? I don't know, Domino's? No. Um, Papa Murphy's? No. Um, Papa John? Yes, what in the world? What popular Pixar franchise is in the works for its fifth film? Oh, that would be Toy Story. You know it. Mm -hmm. What South Asian country touches the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, and the Bay of Bengal? South Asian? I don't know. Japan? No. (laughs) China? No. (laughs) Asia? No. What is the nearest planet to the sun? Um, that would be Uranus, Sarah. No. Jupiter? No. Venus? No. Uh, Rainier beer originated in what U.S. state? In Washington. Correct. <laughs> Who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? Um, oh, uh, I her name's on my head. Oh, crap. What? Ah, uh, <laughs> I can see it, but I can't say it. Anytime now. Pass. Okay. Who plays Sarah Connor in The Terminator? Maya Angelou. No. Oh, never mind. No. <laughs> Steven. Look, I'm just happy I was able to get that name out of my head. You ever think of a name and you can't say it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it was wrong. I don't care if it was wrong. I just wanted to be able to at least articulate what I was thinking. Well, you got three correct, oh, which no. is a loss. Five to three. Let's go, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I did not think that was going to happen. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> did you just say what? Uno? Yeah, you did. Like the game? I guess. No, who knew? Yeah, who knew? Oh, oh, yeah. who knew? oh okay. I was like, right I, don't on, Joe, you rock. I don't think that's what he said. Uh, one that he did get correct. What South Asian country touches the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, and the Bay of Bengal? It literally is probably like the most like obvious answer. India. Kind of, yeah. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After I said my guesses, I was like, why didn't you just say India? Right. Uh, the nearest planet to the sun. He got this also correct. Is Mercury? No, I would never got that. The first woman to win a Nobel Prize. He also got correct. Marie Curie. Oh wow! Yeah, never. Even if you said name. A hundred women. I would have never said that. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't have either. <laughs> I don't the news to me, too. Uh, who plays Sarah Connor in The Terminator? Oh, Linda Hamilton. Yes. And according to Google, what's the city with the most diversity in terms of language? What City? Mm-hmm. Miami. No. New York. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe if you were a little faster, you would have at least tied. But <laughs> too bad. That's what she... No, no, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes! <laughs> That's how I feel about our new merch, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Some baby. would say it's fire. Fire. <laughs> if you like Beavis and Butthead, grew up watching it like we did, then you are going to be in love with the new Daily Mig Show t-shirt in the rock shop. It is Beavis and Butthead Spire. Fire. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and we got to give a big shout out to Justin Hunt. He's the artist that brought it to life. And you can get one today at KISW.com. Yesterday, my son Barrett, who is almost five, did something that made me cry like a little bitch. Oh. I actually cried like a little bitch twice yesterday. So what happened? I will tell you after Audio Slave. The Daily Mix Show. I was an emotional mess of a mom yesterday, Steve Miggs. What did I, you do? I went to martial arts with Barrett. He's a, He's been doing Taekwondo. It's called Little Tigers. You know, it's all four, five, six-year-olds, that kind of thing. Do they have a little tiger on the back of their gi? 
No, they they have just like the like the martial arts logo on the back of it, like the USTA logo. Oh, that's not fun. Oh, we should get tigers. I, wa- I watch Cobra Kai way too much. I want to see like <laughs> logos and like a tiger just like biting another child or something like that. We'll work on that. I'll, okay. I'll put that in the suggestion. I box. know a guy who can make it happen. <laughs> so he he's a senior white belt now, which is the white belt with the black stripe in it. Mm-hmm. But then you also earn these like little taped stripes on the ends of the belt for doing different things. So yesterday he earned his yellow stripe, and that is for like basically like behavior at home because he's been doing a really good job behaving at home. So we filled out the form. Wait, does the sensei live with you now? No. <laughs> How do they know that? You fill it out and you, and the parent signs it. It says like, you know, how do they do with talking back? How do they do with, you know, following instructions? How do they do with, Oh you man, know. I'd be so torn. I think I would lie just to keep getting my, I don't know what, my, well, my child, get my child some more yellow stripes. Oh, it's funny. So I actually go through the list with Brad because he is the way more honest, honest one than I am. Like I, I'm with you. I'm like, no, he's doing great. He's just a perfect child at home. And Brad's like, really? The options are always sometimes and never. And Brad was like, let's go with sometimes on that one. Let's go with never on See, that one. Brad sounds like my wife said in a sense, like she would be honest to a fault with those kind of things and say, you know, yeah, Tatum could be better. Whereas I'm just like, no, Tatum's perfect at home. I don't oh, know yeah. what you're asking, sensei. So we were very honest because of Brad's feelings feedback but he got his yellow stripe yesterday and j- he just looked up at me and ha- had this like look of of pride and I just got the lump in my throat and started to lose it and I'm like pull it together mom just a little wimp no it's a, it's a cool moment though you're watching <laughs> your child grow you're watching him achieve something I, I can understand that well no one else was crying it was just me Oh, so did you? Were you crying in front of other parents? Well, yeah. There's a handful of other parents in there. Because I definitely am that guy. Like, but thankfully, whenever she does her like ballet recitals, and you know, all of a sudden you start hearing someone else sniffle because their kid did something adorable, then it just like triggers you to start sniffling. So I'm just like, oh, this is. Thank God the lights are off because otherwise people will be seeing me and just tearing up. Oh yeah. Well, the lights are definitely all on at Taekwondo, and I was definitely like trying to hold it together, shoulder shaking a little bit. So how much longer until he becomes a yellow belt? So the next time he tests, he will get to test. I think it's yellow belt is the next belt. Yeah. You, look at you know everything. I know nothing. So he, he will get to test. I, I think they have to earn <laughs> They have to earn four of these taped stripes on and, their belt, and then they can go in and do testing for the next belt. So I think it'll be about maybe a month from now-ish yeah. that he'll get to test for his next belt, and I'm very excited. Oh, I can't even imagine what the emotions will be like once he gets the yellow belt. That's a big deal. It's a huge deal, and it's. I think it really is paying off. At, you know, at home and just how he listens so much better than he did. He's been doing this since February, and I'm very happy. And he's starting kindergarten in three weeks. Steve, I am a hot mess. Dude, I know. Right now, we're in the talks of like the preschool type of stuff, and yeah. like, and that's just like been stressful beyond all belief because it's just like you know, you've just been so used to having your kid around the house all the time. And one of us at some point is always with her, mm-hmm. you know, it's, or, or grandma. But like, you know, we've never had a babysitter, never had a nanny. And then all of a sudden now you just be like, here, random person that, you know, we believe is a good person. You now are in control of our child for a few hours a day. Best wishes. Yeah. Well, and, and we've been a part of that Dolly Parton Imagination Library for so long. And I think it was yesterday. I think this is the last book because when you turn five, you no longer get a book from Dolly anymore. Mm. It's just the first five years of life. They send you one book a month. So we got the That's last the book yeah. yesterday. And it's basically a book about kindergarten and being ready for kindergarten. So we're reading that in bed last night and I'm losing it again. I didn't know that there was an age cut off because we, we signed up for the Dolly Parton thing. And if I had known, I would have made my daughter younger so we could get books for a long <laughs> Longer yeah. period of time because I'm like, man, we're only going to because she turns five in December. So, and we just recently started that. I know. It's, I can't believe Tatum's almost five. It's insane. <laughs> so, I'm thinking about maybe just creating a fake child yeah, to fine. get more books from yeah. Dolly. <laughs> you should register DJ. The dog. Yeah. Yes. They don't need to know. They don't need to. They'll never know. And Dolly probably loves animals. I, I remember the mo- most recent time, mom. Um, I, I definitely, I had that moment at home where I was just like busted into waterworks. And it was just like, it's so funny how like having a kid just triggers these things. And you're just like, what the hell happened to you, man? Like we like, used to be so edgy and cool. Well, I mean, <laughs> at least I didn't cry <laughs> over stupid stuff as, as much as I do now. But I remember like Tatum looked at me and goes, daddy, can I do a puppet show for you? And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't, no. No, I didn't say no because it just it brought back like these emotions from when I was a kid yeah. and like you know my dad and my grandpa hated when I did puppet shows so they would just tell me to shut up and go into my room so then all of a sudden here's my daughter saying hey I want to do something that I used to do as a kid that I got shut down and I'm like well I ain't gonna shut her down I want to watch this but it, like it kind of made me remember like how much it sucked being a kid and being told 
basically what you want to do for somebody they don't want to even have anything to do with because it's just like that was just the household I grew up in. And now all of a sudden I'm witnessing my child kind of having that same kind of silly, creative, entertainer spark that I had when I was a kid. And I'm like, I ain't shutting this down. I don't care how bad this puppet show is. I'm going to enjoy every second of it. And it was terrible. But I loved every second of that puppet show. Don't play her this audio. Don't play her this. (laughs) That's pretty awesome, though, that you've uh, passed along the art of puppet mastery. (laughs) And she just she was holding a sock and doing that. It wasn't even a good pup. I got to get her a puppet. I will say these moments don't go away. You know, for a while, I had one yesterday because Lily and I were talking about our Halloween costumes. And she was very pumped when we started talking. Mind you, she's 10. She wants to be Beetlejuice Lydia. And she wants me to be Beetlejuice. She wants to be Lydia. And yeah. I was like, but this is her last year of elementary school. And I was like, this may be the last time that she wants to do matching costumes with her dad. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, I got to enjoy this one, guys. Is she going to go red dress, Lydia? She She's deciding to. Oh, I'm so excited She's not for that. sure yet. Dude, I thought of you yesterday. Just quick aside. The home store's already got a bunch of Halloween decorations oh, yeah. out there to purchase. And oh, yeah. like my daughter picked, bought the, the Zero dog from <gasps> yes. Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah, she doesn't even know what it is, but she just like that had a pumpkin yeah. nose. Costco's got all the <laughs> Halloween stuff. I'm ready. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy how quickly they have that stuff out. Yeah. Not sure if you guys saw this. Yesterday on ESPN, something beyond crazy happened. There was a natural disaster that struck while they were on the air. But how the host handled this was next level awesome. And you're going to hear how it went at 720. Yes, the Daily Mix Show. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hiring is a lonely business. Posting jobs, sifting through resumes, interviews with unqualified applicants, being ghosted. What if you could link with dozens of qualified candidates who are ready to work right now with just one connection? That's Express Employment Professionals. Find us at ExpressPros.com. One connection, the workforce you need. Problem solved. Express Employment Professionals. ExpressPros.com. Have you ever been in the middle of a natural disaster? Yeah, I mean, earthquake. Yeah. Not, oh, yeah. On, the, not on the air, but an earthquake for sure. I was in a, in a building when, when I worked at the end and we felt it. What year was that? Do you I, remember? Probably I, like 02, I'm there guessing. There were a couple times. There was one time I was at the station and one time I was at home when it happened. And that one was that one was the more gnarly one that actually took out some buildings in like the Pioneer Square area. I mean, we're talking like 15, 20 years ago. Well, ESPN's Malika Andrews was doing a live interview when a 4.4 magnitude earthquake hit yesterday near Los Angeles. And the way she handled it was insane. And it was so much fun to see, particularly the crowd sort of getting behind. As we have a bit of an earthquake here in Los Angeles... So we're just going to make sure that our studio lights, everything stays safe, everything's shaking. You good, Mylan? Everybody good? All right, thank you so much for bearing with us through that. Our studio was shaking just a little bit. Tarsi, if you're still good in the studio and in the everyone's still good. All right, so this is what I want to show you now. Rebecca, I appreciate you just bearing with us here. Oh, she goes right back to the report. Checks up on everybody. Y'all are good. All right, let's keep going. That's the part that was most impressive to me is the way she was just like, I'm going to step up as a leader and make sure everyone is cool. I she handled it like a pro. Wait, I mean, I, okay, this lady's a reporter for KCAL, which is also a TV. It's a news station over in uh, California. Same, same earthquake. Her name is Amy Johnson. I mean, she still handled it well, but you could tell, like, she was a little panicked. You'll hear it in her voice. Like, she's just got that, 
She's got that attitude like, is somebody going to tell me if I need to stop broadcasting and get under to this desk? Here, just listen to her as she's trying her best to keep her cool, but you can kind of hear a little nerves are kicking in. Feeling it pretty strong here in the studio right now, and um, we are waiting for information to find out exactly where that earthquake was centered and uh, the size of it, but feeling... The shaking here in the studio, I feel like it was pretty big or pretty close to the location. I'm hoping that the producer can tell me soon exactly where it and was. Point, she's like, is someone going, is that, that's, that's the cue, producer. Tell me if I should get under the desk. <laughs> where it was. We're showing you uh, the shaking, uh, I believe, that we just felt here. Um, I certainly felt uh, quite the rumbling, quite the shaking, the desk here shaking. I grew up here in Southern California. I felt many earthquakes, and this was one where I was thinking it was time to get underneath this uh, desk. Paul, are we going to continue on, or what's the plan? She's like, Paul. <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything, Paul. Meanwhile, like, this was the same TV news station that, like, five years ago when they had that, like, 7.1 earthquake where, like, they did go under the desk. We are experiencing quite a bit of shaking. If you'll mm -hmm. give us a brief moment here, we're mm -hmm. making sure that nothing is going to come down in the yeah. studio here. And it is going for uh, quite a bit, everybody. I, it continues it, it, this is to, a very strong to rattle earthquake. pretty strong here. 821 here on the air. We're experiencing very strong shaking. Wow. I think we need to get under the desk. All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back, back after we'll this. Right wow. You can hear her voice like just escalate during that clip, too. And you can also hear, he's, he, he's not saying anything. The video, his eyes are bugging out like, handle this because I'm freaking out. Oh, I don't think I don't think I would be cool as a cucumber in that situation. I was going to just an FYI, we wouldn't go we wouldn't go off the air to a break. We would just pull our mics down and, bro gonna, and broadcast reach. from under the desk. Dude, I would absolutely just pull this microphone under the desk yeah. and just be like, you know, might as well just keep it going. Yeah. I say that. I'd probably just run out and just like <laughs> run out where? I don't know. Okay. You would just leave all of us. Yeah, I make sure you guys are good, but I, as I'm running out. You would not make sure we, we were good. Sorry, goodbye. See you later. <laughs> also, I'd be so afraid that like we all just wouldn't be like swearing like crazy if that happened, if the I, mic stayed on. Part of me feels like we might be able to get a pass if we drop an S-bomb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just the S-bomb and just one? Because I feel like the entire time. One each, one each at least, right? Okay. <laughs> Steve's just kicking you under the desk. Stop cussing, Sarah. <laughs> so I'm just going, OS, 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 what the F, OS, OS, what the F. And I'd be like, we're about to die, Steve, okay? <laughs> well, I think it would be great if we could hear from the Rockaholics about this subject. What, if they've been in an earthquake? Yeah, if they've been in an earthquake or maybe a hurricane or a tornado, 206-803-ROCK. If you have experienced a natural disaster, please do call us up. I... I bet earthquake, obviously. We've had earthquakes here. But I'd be surprised if we had... What about like a tsunami? Ooh. Do you think anyone here has ever experienced something like that? I feel like that one we probably won't get any calls. If, well, if there's a tsunami person out there, please do call. Or tornado. I feel like we have some tornado folks around here. I feel like a lot of people like like going and looking for tornadoes that you like wouldn't expect because it's just it's, I've heard it's like an adrenaline rush of like oh we're going to find one. Because I remember experiencing a hurricane, a small one, but it was in New York of all. It was crazy. Like, but I remember there were some people that were like, "We need to go head to the beach because the waves will be epic." And I'm like, "These are the dumbest people." <laughs> <laughs> That's like step one, not what not to do. Right. So call us up now two zero six eight zero three rock. Have you ever experienced a natural disaster? Bonus points if you've experienced a tsunami. We will take your calls after Allison Chains. The Daily Mix Show. Rockaholics, have you ever experienced a natural disaster? 206 803 Rock. All of this stemming from the moment on ESPN yesterday where Malika Andrews handled it like a pro during a live interview when the 4.4 magnitude earthquake hit near Los Angeles. 206 803 Rock. L Lois in Olympia, tell us about your Mount St. Helens experience. Oh my gosh. Hi, guys. What's up, oh, yeah, Lois? My kids call me the queen of natural disasters. Oh, boy. Uh oh. The only one I haven't been through so far is a hurricane. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so, in 1980, we were, my cousin and I were out chopping wood in the morning, listening to KSW, and we were in Rochester, and Mount St. Helens blew up. Oh, my gosh. I hope my wife's not listening right now because that's, like, her biggest fear. Yeah. So we got to see the bloom. We heard the roar. Um, we found out that our house down in Kelso, Longview, had washed away in the Toodle River, so it was gone. Oh, wow. no. 
so that started it. But yeah, we I've been through the ninety six flood, the two thousand seven flood down in Centralia. And like I told her, we were raising feeder guppies at that time and we had eight and a half feet of water in our house. Oh my gosh. And I, it was really gross. I <laughs> forgot about the, the, the flooding ones because I remember it was like right around like ninety seven, ninety eight. I can't remember exactly when, but there was yep. like all the crazy flooding was going on and I was moving here from New York to Washington and my parents were they were so opposed to me going at that time. They're just like, What are you doing? They're they're in the middle of like flooding and stuff like that. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, we flooded bad. And and then it's so funny because we were heading out to just getting off work at a hotel, heading out to Ocean Shores when the tsunami in Japan hit. So it was like, uh, we turned around because the waves were getting, it was like two, about a day after the big tsunami. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Ocean Shores had the waves coming in. So it was like, yeah, we're done. We're going home. <laughs> Well, thanks, Lois. That's crazy. So, m- mental note, never hang out with Lois. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the walking natural disaster. They just follow her around. 206-803-ROCK. Casey is on I-5. Tell us about the hurricanes in Mississippi. Yeah, well, that's uh, trying to make up for the grief what that lady before me hasn't been into. So, the hurricane that was there in the Air Force in 1979 in Biloxi, it was a pretty major hurricane that they hadn't had one that big in 10 years. But all of us, our rooms faced out, so we had to take all of our mattresses and sleep in the hallway that night. The next day, um, if you can imagine, like, the barracks would be in the military, three stories. They'd have those thick, like, uh, tar paper roofs with Uh gravel in them. Some of that got blown up off the roof, spun around, lifted a car up or two, and put them uh, that roof under the car and set the cars back down on that. There was places like over big trees probably uh three four foot wide Jeez. you know blown over it, it was just crazy to see a hurricane casey i love how they're like yeah take your bed put it in the hallway so you can sleep i'm like i'm not sleeping like i mean i, I mean i'll take it there and i'll sit on it <laughs> not much of a slept but that was to keep us safe from windows breaking it you know the windows could crash in it oh, yeah 100 yeah. percent trucker brad is in kent you experienced an earthquake in 1983 where was it uh, it was actually the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake in San Francisco. Oh, wow. oh. Was that the one during the Baseball World Series? That's exactly right, Steve. Um, so I was in Mountain View, which is just a little south of San Francisco, and I was getting ready for work, and I had just stepped out of the bathroom and sat my uh, razor on the sink, and I stared at down the hall at the TV, and they were getting ready to start the game. And uh, all of a sudden, it felt like somebody picked my, my duplex up threw it in the air about 20 feet, and it came crashing down. And then um, every all hell broke loose from there. Um, I couldn't stand up. I got to my front door. Um, there were three-foot-tall waves of asphalt going gyrating through my parking lot. Jeez. Uh, the guy across from me, his boat was coming out of his garage. I looked over at the street um, where my car was parked, and there was 50-foot of uh, palm trees bending in half wow. it was it was terrifying just terrifying Did and it never seemed like it ended it, it went on for like 40 seconds it was just forever i couldn't even imagine Did, was that something that inspired you to get out of that town like I'm, i need to move i can't be in i can't be living around here well I, it's not my favorite thing it traumatized me because then i moved to an up above the garage apartment and i kept you know envisioning another earthquake yeah. like that the apartment collapse, you know? Oh, absolutely. I'd be freaking out. 40 seconds would be an eternity. Yeah. Tim in Puyallup, tell us about where you were when you were in a hurricane. Hey, can you hear me? You yep. can. Hey, how's it going? Great. So I was, I was. Uh, this is back in September of 22, um, so pretty recent. I was in Disney World uh, during Hurricane Ian, oh. uh, which was super interesting. So you were there at so, the amusement park while it was hitting? Yeah, well, so they, they of course, knew it was coming. So uh, beforehand, we had four days that were scheduled to be in the park. We went in the first day, and then that day we came back, they said, yeah, everybody has to stay in their rooms and essentially be on lockdown until further notice. And that lasted two days. So they closed the park down for two days. So we, we luckily we had a nice hotel there. We stayed in our room for two days. Uh, That first day that we were on lockdown is kind of when the hurricane was really going over. And we weren't quite in the center or anything like that, but but this specific hurricane was a Category 4. Wow. 
40 mile um, uh, radius, or, or the eye was 40 miles wide, I should say. And um, so it was, it was pretty large and it moved slowly. So that first day we were on lockdown, we were just kind of watching the crazy winds from the hotel room and we couldn't see much except for the trees going crazy, all that typical stuff. Well, then the next day, we were technically supposed to stay in our room still, but I. I ventured out after that because I was very curious. What was going <laughs> of course, on the, of course. <laughs> Especially being over here in Washington, we don't get you know super crazy storms like that. So anyway, I, I walked out and it was it was wild. I mean, there were trees completely uprooted out of the ground. It, it was anything but you know a, a fantasy land out, out oh, there. Oh God! So it was, did, did it, it, it was interesting. Did it cause any damage to any of like the rides or any? Because I mean, it sounds like you went and then after a couple of days, or was everything yeah. stood up just fine? <laughs> Yeah, everything set up just fine. I mean, they, they what was told to me actually by the locals there is a lot of people will actually book hotel rooms in that area because they're typically safer than where they're currently living when a storm comes through. Gotcha. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Remember an earthquake hit like the day before we were going to Disneyland? And it wasn't a big one, but like we felt it in our hotel. It was on the news and all that. And I remember thinking like... It's just gonna, I think selfish, but you know, like, is this gonna impact us going to Disneyland? And I remember asking, like, the hotel, and they almost like laughed at me. They're like, you, you haven't experienced a lot of earthquakes. No, you're gonna be fine tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Don't worry. You're, you're fine. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, we did experience a natural disaster this morning, and that was your performance during Beat Meg, Steve. <laughs> What'd you score? Three? He's not going to talk to you. Sorry, the wind over here is too loud. I can't hear you. So, Rockaholics, if you'd like a shot at beating Steve, I want you to know his record is 222 wins, 66 losses, and 35 ties in 2024. 206-803-ROCK. We will play Beat Migs at 750. The Daily Mig Show. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hiring is a lonely business. Posting jobs, sifting through resumes, interviews with unqualified applicants, being ghosted. What if you could link with dozens of qualified candidates who are ready to work right now with just one connection? That's Express Employment Professionals. Find us at ExpressPros.com. One connection, the workforce you need. Problem solved. Express Employment Professionals. ExpressPros.com. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing your firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. 
That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. The Daily Mix Show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix. Don't be a loser. The B mix. I know Rob from Olympia is. Rob, are you there? Oh, I'm here. Oh, I like that. Well, I'm Sarah, your host, and it's time for you to get out of here, Steve. Bye bye. For those playing at home, Rob has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic? Amelia Earhart. Correct. What singer had the 70s hit song Candle in the Wind? What football tight end will host the Prime Video Game Show? Are you smarter than a a celebrity? Luke Wilson. No. Uh, Pat. What musical contains the songs The Perfect Nanny and A Spoonful of Sugar? Mary Poppins. Correct. What is the largest joint in the human body? The spine. No. The, uh, The knee. Yes. The four countries that make up the United Kingdom are England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and what? Wales. Correct. What is the main meat ingredient in a traditional shepherd's pie? Wham. Yes. Catherine Heigl played Izzy Stevens in what drama series? Pass. Where are most sweat glands located on the human body? Say again? Where are the most sweat glands located on the human body? Armpit. No. D. Did you say feet? Feet. Yes, that would be correct. Nice. Rob, you got six correct. What do we think? What do we think? Well, he sounded confident. Honestly, I felt like it was a lot more than six, too. I know it wasn't, but like it just, as we were going through it, I was like, that was like nine. Um, Yeah, I'm with Danny on this one. It sounds more like a nine. (laughs) (laughs) That's how many questions you got to. All right, Steve, are you ready? Oh, yes. Who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic? Amelia Earhart. You know it. What singer had the 70s hit song Candle in the Wind? Elton John. Yes. What football tight end will host the Prime Video Game Show Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? Oh, it's got to be Gronk. Rob Rob Gronkowski. No. Oh, damn it. Uh, Oh, what's that guy? Mr. Taylor Swift. Um, Travis Kelsey. Yes. What musical contains the songs The Perfect Nanny and A Spoonful of Sugar? Oh, um... Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? No. Mary Poppins? Correct. What is the largest joint in the human body? (laughs) Um, Oh, my gosh. I was going to say the femur. Well, you'd be wrong. Oh. Uh, The thigh? No. (laughs) The ribs? No. The four countries that make up the United Kingdom are England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and what? France. No. No, no. (laughs) No, no. No, no. No, no. Um... (laughs) I don't know. London. No. Uh, Great Britain. No. What is the main meat ingredient in a traditional shepherd's pie? Potatoes. No. Ah! Oh, my. Is that a meat, sir? You know, honestly, I think he thinks that because he was so fired up about the tofu tots until he realized (laughs) that potatoes were also vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, and way more tasty than the tofu tots. You better watch your mouth, Oh, you said meat? Yes. Yes, I said, what is the main meat ingredient? Oh, I I didn't hear that part. (laughs) Well... Beef? You'd be wrong anyway. Okay. It's lamb, uh, which is the decision maker because you got four correct. Oh, oh I guess it's not because he got six. Six to four, Rob. Look, man. Ha ha, suck it, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Rob. So do I. He rolled in very sure of himself and it worked out. It did. Fuck it, Trebek. I know, I know right? What? Um, I love that you got... Time to tickle a lizard. <laughs> whoa. Hey, Trebek. Whoa, whoa, calm down. Gangstas. <laughs> That's so good. I love that Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey is hosting Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? I'm a game show whore, so I'm going to check it out. Um, Cap- Ch- you said it was on Amazon? 
It's going to be on Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah. The first three episodes drop on o- October 16th. So mm. mark it on your calendars. No, I'll the try and do that later. Largest joint in the human body. Taryn. The- Rob got it right. Yeah. Oh. It's the knee joint. Taryn and I got messed up ones. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I think the femur is not a joint. It's just a bone. Oh, you know, I, I I was like half listening the entire time. It's my bad. I didn't even hear that part about the joint. I just heard bone or something like that. I am putting all into this with my voice, okay? Yeah. And you're only half listening. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting 0% <laughs> with my ears. Two that you didn't get to. Catherine Heigl played Izzy Stevens in what? Oh, Grey's Anatomy. Series? Yes. And where are the most sweat glands located on the human body? Let's say on their, uh, behind the ears. What is up with the behind your ears? Are they really sweaty? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Armpits? No. Rob got this right. He said feet, which I accepted. But more important, they're the soles of your feet. So, Mm -hmm. Oh, this is part of your agenda that trying to make Danny and I wash our feet? Yes. Just Mm -hmm. want to put that out there that it's the sweatiest part of your body. So wash them up. Scrub it. Download the Odyssey app. Log in and listen to KISW for your chance to win your share of 100 thousand dollars you can get more info on that contest at kisw.com so we just got a text from a rockaholic they were wondering what other crazy stuff happened in san diego oh boy and i will say there was a lot yes there sure was we have a drunk dynamic duo over here Migs and sarah who spent time during a dinner (laughs) with our big boss trying to drunkenly convince him to listen to some specific songs oh my god Oh boy. You're going to oh hear what forgot happened. You guys recorded this. After Guns N' Roses. Great. The Daily Migs Show. We had a stellar time at Morning Show Boot Camp, a wonderful radio convention with folks Absolutely. From all over the country. And there were some really great learning moments. I mean, I had my notebook. I was there with Sarah Bright and Early taking notes. I wasn't. <laughs> but the best moments. Probably came while we were under the influence. And Migs, I believe we did get a text about this. We did. Someone texted in this morning. Said, I'm loving all the San Diego stories. Your work conference sounds a lot like mine. A giant drink fest. LOL. That's right. We're not the only ones that go to these work conferences and just have a great time and just go nuts. No. Someone said, I love the story about Taryn bleaching her <laughs> bottom. Please tell me you have more audio of your drunken antics. And if you missed it yesterday, you might want to download the Odyssey app and, oh and listen to the Daily Migs Daily podcast to hear... This story, this is a shortened version of Taryn's bleached <laughs> bottom story. So I <laughs> had had my <laughs> bleached. <laughs> I had had my <laughs> bleached mm-hmm. and my husband was all about it. And I went away for a girl's weekend with my mom and my sisters. Mm-hmm. I went into I the might. bathroom and I took a picture like in the mirror <laughs> of me like. Sp- wait, 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 wait. When you wait, logistically. <laughs> Where did you put... And that's our friend Miguel, who's awesome. And he hosts a show called Miguel and Holly over in in Charlotte, Charlotte. right? Mm -hmm. Where did you put the camera? And then did you put a timer on? Or how did you say... Wait, I have questions. You you get the answers if you listen to the rest of the (laughs) daily podcast from yesterday. Well, we did have another thing that happened. We got to go out to a to a little bit of a, a little team building dinner yes. with our big boss man, Sergeant Hair Club. And Sarah, you and Steve were trying to convince him to listen to some certain music. And mind you, this is I mean, it's like what, like six thirty yeah. in the evening, but they but it was open bar. Oh yeah. So this is why that happened. Wait, wait, Steve, Steve, what is Sarah trying to do right now? Right now she's trying to she's trying to preach to our boss sergeant hair club. Hey. Hi. Hi. That. He sounds so enthused. <laughs> so He's like, He's like these I, people. I come here to get away from these idiots, and now here I am stuck with these idiots again. That one of the greatest. I'm trying to preach to him that red, red Drake, red. Cla- I don't know. Red what is it? What is it? Red Clay Stray. Thank you, Gabe. <laughs> Mornings on the Wolf. <laughs> Shout out to Gabe. <laughs> I'm trying to preach to him that that's the greatest band in the world right now. Thank you, Guillermo Rosas, for that. <laughs> She's trying to preach that wet ass. Oh it is God. the greatest song in the world. Hey, I just want to say. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The fact that Sarah actually believes that is also hilarious. I also love that you can just hear the drunkenness in both Taryn and Sarah's voices. Like, every time yes. we go out, it's, they they're, they're, they get a higher register. Something's going on. Yeah, unlike you and me, Daddy. We just, we're, we're sober all the, time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, you guys don't sound drunk at all. Hey, I just want to say, I think it's a great beat. It's a great vibe. And I threw my bouquet at my wedding, so obviously. I, I, Sarah has definitely uh, grown up quite a bit since I, uh, I? last saw her. 
Um, what do you think I think? <laughs> I don't, and here I, I am being I, like, oh, I want to tell you about this song. It's like, I just want to be loved. <laughs> and she's like, when it's f- seven days a week. I'm like, what do you think he's going to like? Is it, sad, is it shocking that the sad music that Steve played for me? Which he did not like. No, he I loved, loved it. it. Oh. He freaking oh. loved did it, he? you weirdo. Okay. Oh. It's a tequila talking, guys. I'm sorry. You what you love adding WAP to his playlist? I just ruined it. I just ruined it. Well, Taryn, it didn't Taryn, look real. But Taryn, what do you think of what has? Uh, Cardi B is a queen. Yes, and then this, let's go. If he's got a bucket and a mop. Yay. No, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's that. Yeah, dude, the that, radio that, edit is you, almost not even worth you, listening to. You started playing that, and I got so excited. I, I was edit. like, "Wait, did we start playing that? <laughs> did we start playing that?" We actually did. We, we both had our phones out, putting it in Dave's ear, trying to convince him. I'm like, "Dave, no, listen to this." Yes, yeah, Sarah. Wow, that's a. I still completely stand by that entire audio clip. That's a contrast if I've ever heard They're not the same artist. They're both by Cardi B. This really gets the party started. I feel it. We weren't trying to get the party started with our boss. I'm always trying to get the party started. Fair, There there was another core highlight for me, though, but that was when Danny and Sarah were going at it like siblings. And it was out of control, and I'm surprised we did not get kicked out. Dude, when they get drunk together, it's like as if they're just trying to set each other on fire. (laughs) Sarah. City, Sarah. Okay, I was also maybe having a couple too many tequilas in this situation. All of a sudden, I'm the mayor of San Diego. Sarah, Sarah, what just happened? Sarah, we own this city. Right, Sarah, Sarah, why is your hair wet right From now? From my recollection, okay, so I sat next to you, Danny, and immediately you were like, Sarah, f- you, and you poured your water on me, and I was like, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. What the hell, Danny? Can I say I don't remember getting this audio? I literally do not remember. I thought I didn't think. I thought we were just going to tell the story. I didn't know there was audio involved. <laughs> and so then I poured my water on you. That's not what I said. You, and then you poured me, or you poured another drink on me. And so I guess I took some random, some random person's espresso or martini that was probably like twenty dollars and poured it on you. And now we both smell like coffee. We own this city. I took a shower. What is going on over here? I took a shower, so I... Oh, look at me! That wasn't your espresso martini, was that? No. I'm surprised we're not kicked out right now. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. We have no excuse. It was 10 o'clock when all this went down. Yeah, oh yeah. We did figure out whose martini it was. We did. Okay, so I'm with my girl Greta, right? Yeah, so we were talking about drinks and the type of person that they'd be based on what they drink, right? Yeah. So I was like, I was looking at Danny, and he was like, he looks like someone who just drinks, like, Jaeger. Like, yeah, who wants a Jaeger bomb? Yeah. This guy right here. Right. It's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. And then what, what am I? You give me very much espresso martini. Okay, well, so. Guess what she did? She f- poured an espresso martini on me. Oh! No! But it wasn't hers. It was mine! Oh, <laughs> yes, it was mine! No, it was not. I'm like, let me go get my espresso martini. Guess who was all over? My pants! I feel like this is a full circle moment. This is my karma for saying that Danny drinks Jaeger and he's a Jaeger monster. Yeah, I'm like, he's my little bitch. Me. I owe you a martini though, girl. Please, or a shot. Or a shot. Yeah, that seems about fair. Also, her name's not Greta. That's my favorite part. Thank you for bringing that up. Because at first I thought I heard her say, I'm like, did I just hear her say Greta? It's It's Etta. Etta, yeah. Wait, you were calling her Greta? She was calling her Greta that all entire night. Etta never corrected her then. No. Literally the entire the entire weekend. And her and I like hung out a lot. She was my girl. I she le- was in it for the long haul. She was there each night in the after party. She was awesome. Oh, yeah. I legit do not remember getting that audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I and I will say literally the next day, Danny, I asked Danny who that espresso martini was. Oh, and boy. he was like, I think it was Gre- Etta's. 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 Etta. Yeah. And so then I kept trying to find her. Little did I know, I already knew that. Oh boy. And she knows. Oh my gosh. We're a mess. Well, I'll just hit her up on Instagram and apologize. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, speaking of audio, the Olympics are done, but some are still arguing over the closing ceremonies and whether or not Billie Eilish was, uh, Billie Eilish was lip syncing her performance. Did you watch it? I did. I oh. did. And I, I'm. I'm, I'm there's a lot of arguing. I still believe she was lip syncing. I think I do too. Mm-hmm. So, of course, because of all this controversy, we're going to have to go straight to the comments at 820. 
The Daily Migs Show. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Everyone knows social media is a time suck. And what you're about to hear proves it. If it's online, someone, somewhere, has an opinion and is whining about it. So let's get straight to the comments. At the 2024 Paris Olympics, Billie Eilish performed her song Birds of a Feather with her brother Phineas accompanying on guitar for the closing ceremonies. And the performance sparked some controversy among yep. fans because they are accusing her of lip syncing. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, how dare she? Right. It's never happened before. Never on television. So a lot of people on social media have commented that her performance appeared to be obviously pre-recorded, pointed out that her microphone was way too far away from her mouth during the performance, and we have a clip from it. All right, I heard enough. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine. Now, while this is going on, mind you, the microphone is kind of close to her belly button, and she's singing almost up away from the microphone. You know, it's weird. I've only heard that one, the popular song that she had a couple of years ago. The bad back. guy the one? The bad guy one. I've never actually heard her sing like that. I thought she just rapped. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're way off, man. Yeah, I never heard once listened to her. Way off. Wow. Honestly, I like the bad guy song. And then I kept hearing more of her stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 this isn't my thing. <laughs> well, because of her performance, a lot of people are fired up. They are mad. And yeah, so they, they had are. to take to the comment section. And that means we have to go straight to the comments. All right, we sent a few of these posts and comments to our production director, Jason, a.k.a. Veggie Dog, a.k.a. VD, and said, hey, pick out some of your favorite Reenact them however you'd like. Sometimes he even adds his own commentary. You just never know with Jason. He's a wild card. Are you ready for the first comment about whether or not Billie Eilish was lip syncing? Let's go. All right. Billie Eilish sucks. There. I said it. Oh, Oh, I think we said it too, Danny. (laughs) Kind of, sort of. Are you a Billie Eilish fan? I like her. I like her a lot. Do you listen to her records? I, I listen to some of her songs. I'm not like a b- biggest Billie, Billie Eilish fan, but I like You Should See Me in a Crown. I like Bad Guy. Yeah, I don't know that first one that you just said. Oh, You Should See Me in a Crown. Is that the one that was on um, in like some movie? I feel like that's the one that, that was the one that first kind of launched her career. Okay. Not the Barbie song. All right, let's check out our next comment. This is so gross. They have athletes risking it all for their countries. And she can't even risk singing live. <laughs> okay. Give me a break. Well, for some, I think it's production reasons that they're just like, it's easier to just have them lip sync. I still think she was lip syncing. I mean, that mic was really far. And I know some people are like, oh, the microphone picks it. She uses a very sensitive microphone, which she might. But I feel like if she used a very sensitive microphone, it would have picked up everything around her. We demand answers, Billy. You need to come forward with the truth. Would it bother you if she came forward with the truth and said, yeah, I was lip syncing? No. Just to shut everybody up? No, because think about how many pop stars do entire concerts lip syncing. Like, I really don't care. I kind of expect it. I do, too. Sarah, would it bother you? 
No, but I also don't really like her either, so that's oh, probably I'm why. Only, I'm the only Billy fan in this room. You're yeah. the only one. Damn it. Weirdo. Bruh, she kept moving the mic like three feet from her face, yet the volume, sound of her voice never changed. Her lip syncing was almost as bad as Ashley Simpson on SNL. I don't get it. I forgot about that. Every couple of years I go back and watch that and it never disappoints. I have never seen that. Like I just <laughs> I just go recently found out about that because I used to love her music and I was right. like, what happened to her? And then I heard that happened and I was like, oh no. It was like her? That was the moment that killed her career. And then you, you remember the Millie Vanilli one. Oh, I mean, it, maybe, this is definitely before Danny and Sarah's time. But I'm sure it's on YouTube where they were performing like on the MTV VMAs or one of those performances and the backing track, which was really just a track because they not only were they lip syncing, those weren't even really their voices. And it got caught like on a loop and it just kept repeating. And it was just like, didn't they lost a Grammy? Yes. They took it back. This attempt at lip syncing is more embarrassing given that Ray Gunn's attempt that break. That's like- oh, how dare you bring Ray Gunn into this, sir? You leave Ray Gunn alone. Yeah. Also, I watched the performance, and I don't know, Danny, maybe you could watch it too since you you, you play an instrument. I know, Sarah, you play, I mean, Taryn, you play the saxophone, but kind of. I'm pretty sure that the entire band was pretend playing. Oh, that's probably true. Watch the drummer. Okay. Because the, the, the way that the drums sound in that performance sound like an electronic drum kit. He's playing an, an acoustic one, which I'm sure they could do some triggers and different things to make it sound that way. But there's one part where he's just moving his hand around. I'm not even sure he's hitting any instruments. <laughs> All right, we have one more comment about Billie Eilish. Even if she did lip sync, what the f***? Who cares? People get mad at the dumbest f***. <laughs> Find something better to complain about. It was more offensive seeing the singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers with his shirt off after all. Oh, oh. my gosh, I would pay extra for that. I gotta be honest, man. At 60, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm striving to have that physique. <laughs> he the, looks oh, great. They look amazing. Yeah. Don't be hating on my chilies. I mean, maybe the mustache. You could goof on his mustache. That's creepy looking. But yeah, yeah besides that, I think he looked great. Yeah, like a mushroom, like a mushroom cut and a mustache at the same time. Like, he doesn't care. He's Anthony Kiedis. He's like, make me look as ugly as possible. And I'm still going to be pulling in the hottest chick. <laughs> that la- that that look has gone for a very long time. It's like, I liked Anthony Kiedis when he was like the the blonde with the like like little black streak in it. And kind now like surfer dude Anthony Kiedis. Yeah, yeah. Like, but he's had this like mustache like uh, Dumb and Dumber look for quite some time. <laughs> No, you're, 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 he went from looking like a dude that's like surfing and he just got off the beach and he's just, okay, let's write a song to all of a sudden, like, I feel like, like Chris Hansen's like 10 feet away watching him to make sure he's still being okay. Yeah. He, he has that like, like creepy look to him now. Well, we have partnered up with Mary's Place once again, Rockaholics, and we are putting brand new shoes on local children in need. You can help us out with kicks for kids, and any amount will add up. Last year, by the way, we were able to help out nearly 4,000 kids. That was awesome. That should have Rockaholics stepped up huge. We've got a goal of $20,000 this year, and a lot of Rockaholics are helping us on our way. I got to give a shout out to Janine Kirkpatrick. She just donated $200, which is awesome. So now we're getting a little bit closer to 2000 so we're still... Waves away from that 20,000 goal. But hey, Rockaholics, if you donate, if you got a business, put it in the comments when you make the donation. We'll show you some love on, on air for sure. We are on our way, and you can help us out by heading to KISW.com. Everyone is talking about how cool Snoop Dogg was at the Olympics, but can we take a moment to appreciate Flavor Flav? <laughs> the rock of love, baby. He just did something awesome, and we're going to tell you what's trending after Scorpions. The Daily Mig Show. The world is bonkers. There's so much going on out there. And it can be a little bit stressful to know what's going on with pop culture when there's so much information to sift through. So we are here to tell you what's trending. What's trending on the Daily Mix Show. What's trending? Let's go. Let's go. 
Flavor Flav has shown just unwavering support for Team USA at the 2024 Olympics in Paris. First, he sponsored the women's water polo team. Then he paid Veronica Fraley's rent. And most recently... Oh, I didn't know about that one. I knew the, the, the water polo thing. I knew that he was like massively into it. I thought it was pretty cool to see the pictures of him with the water polo team. He had the helmet on yeah. and everything. He also loves uh, Red Lobster, let's not forget. He sure does. That's nothing to do with the Olympics, but it's delicious. And he's also done something very nice for jo- Jordan Childs, who was controversially stripped of her bronze medal in the floor exercise final. He offered to create her her very own unique bronze clock necklace. This is what awesome. it looks like, by the way. Okay. I it's look all at, adorned it, with, gl- with like, pro- I don't know if those are diamonds or... It's a Flavor Flav clock necklace. Yeah. But it's in, it's it's bronze and it's, it's it's blingy as all hell. It's very cool. I would, so, you know, that's almost cooler than a bronze medal, I think. So, what, what I, if I remember correctly, and maybe you know it better than me with the child, she didn't get bronze, but then it turned out that she should have, so U.S., Team USA appealed it, and they got her the bronze, but then it turned out that they didn't appeal it quick enough. Like, they, I guess, were four seconds late to appeal the fact that she should get the bronze medal, so then they got they pulled it away from her again. I think I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I think I think you're tracking exactly what the current situation is. And I think, I think Team USA is still fighting the battle, but right now they're not winning the battle. This is my, I don't know about you guys, but my first thought is, well, at least she's won other medals. Could you imagine if that was the only medal... That like let's just say it's someone who like never has won a medal. Here's their chance. They find out that now the high of highs are getting the bronze medal, and then they find out because their team didn't appeal it quick enough, they're not getting it all because of four freaking seconds. So insane. That's just nuts. I don't know if you guys have heard this story about Drew Barrymore, but she just did an interview and she talked about. Do you remember the movie Fifty First Dates? Love it. I think that movie was awesome. Where it's like it was it her Adam, Adam Sandler, Sandler, and it was just like a happy movie at the end because she kept losing her memory, and then eventually. Well, spoiler alert, I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but it's an old movie, so I can. But they eventually fall in love. It's one of those silly, you know, Drew Barrymore, Adam Sandler movies. But apparently, the original premise, it was going to be a completely different vibe. And also, it was supposed to be set here in Seattle. And here's Drew Barrymore talking about that. Something that always sticks in my mind is the original ending of 51st Kisses, as it was called at the time. Yeah, it was a drama set in Seattle. Um, and the original ending was her saying, you should go and live your life because this is no life here. And he goes away as he does. And he comes back and he walks into the restaurant and he just sits down and says, hi, I'm Henry. And the film ends. <sighs> but I guess the directors realize that's not really as much fun as actually making them fall in love and have all the, the happy go lucky ending that eventually, that eventually 51st States became. Mm-hmm. Would they end up in like Alaska? Yeah. 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 Rob Schneider's in that too, right? I'm kidding. Of course he is. It's an Adam Sandler movie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Rockaholics, it has been quite a morning for Steve so far. Steve, can you tell us your daily record so far? Today? On Beat Migs? Um, You know, sometimes you start off slow, but you pick it back up. And you end on a high note. Right now, I'm 0-2. 0-2. Yes. So, Rockaholics, if you'd like a shot at beating Steve, please do give us a call now, 206-803-ROCK. He's got a record of 222 wins, 67 losses, and 35 ties. In 2024, we will play Beat Migs at 850. The Daily Migs Show. The Daily Migs Show. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands. 
thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard, built to a higher standard. Experience one of the world's top universities on a young and dynamic campus. At the University of British Columbia's Okanagan campus, we bring worlds together to reveal new ways of thinking. Visit ok.ubc.ca to find out more. The Daily Mix Show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix, don't be a loser. I know Matt from Redmond is. Matt, are you there? I'm here. I'm Sarah, your host, and it's time for you to get out of here, Steve. Bye-bye. For those playing at home, Matt has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Which member of the Beatles married Yoko Ono? John Lennon. Correct. What Gossip Girl actress stars in the recently released movie It Ends With Us? Pass. What is the name given to Indian food cooked over charcoal in a clay oven? Pass. What is the biggest technology company in South Korea? Uh, pass. Beginning with J, what is the real first name of Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, Jeff, John. No. John, yes. James. When Walt Disney was a child, which character did he play in his school function? Um, pass. Margaret Court is famous for playing what sport? Tennis. Correct. What kind of alcohol is in a gimlet? Vodka. No. Gin. Correct. Carson City is the capital of what U.S. state? Nevada. Correct. How many st stages are in a butterfly's life cycle? Three, four, five. Four, yes. Woo. Pretty strong, yeah. Yes, Matt, you got six correct. I was a little scared there in the beginning. A lot of passing. I mean, if Miggs performs like he did the first two times he played beat Miggs this morning, this is going to be an easy victory. That's true. And I think uh, the contestant earlier did only get as many right as Matt did. So there is a chance. Hmm. Steve, are you ready? Yes! Which member of the Beatles married Yoko Ono? John Lennon. You know it. Mm -hmm. What Gossip Girl actress stars in the recently released movie It Ends With Us? I don't know. Sigourney Weaver. No. Kate Beckinsall. No. Um, <laughs> Carrie Fisher. No. What know, is the Gilmore name Girls. given to Indian food cooked over charcoal in a clay oven? Sog? No. Oh. Masala? No. Um, Tiki? No. What is the biggest technology Pika? company in South Korea? No. Biggest technology company in South Korea? Apple? No. No. Intel? No. Um, Best Buy? No. Oh. Beginning with J, what is the real first name of Ozzy Osbourne? James? No. Zah? 
James? Oh, crap. Um, Jamarcus. No. <laughs> Jason. Are you okay today? Oh. What Walt Disney, when Walt Disney was a child, which character did he play at his school function? Pinocchio? No. Mickey Mouse? No. Which, I don't know. Donald Duck? No. Peter Pan? There we go. If you have four guesses. Oh. Steve, I just want to let you know oh. that you are number one. You oh. got one correct, oh. which is a huge loss. Six to one. Congratulations, Matt. Thanks. Appreciate it, Steve. Oh, you're welcome. Wow. It was, it was just, I, I did that for you. I he gives. He rem- gives. He does. Yeah, I can't remember the last time you've gotten just one right. Oh, that's oh. nice. You're welcome. Oh. You even look sad. I well, feel sad. Three losses today, guys. I went 0 and 3 today. Can we start keeping tr- track of that statistic? Will you, only if you bring in a confetti cannon for <laughs> how many losses. If he gets to 100 losses... Oh, I'll be yes. so mad at you guys if you set off a confetti cannon because I got 100 losses and not because <laughs> I've got 100 wins or 200 wins or hopefully one day 300 wins. That, that would, would hurt my heart and my soul. I'm in. Let's Almost do as it. much as this song, Danny. You're welcome. Okay, any, going anywhere. any Gossip Girl people here? No. What Gossip Girl actor stars in the recently written movie It Ends With Us? I only know of this movie because it almost it almost beat Deadpool in the box, which shocked me. It's Blake Lively. It's oh. sexy, sexy Blake Lively. Hmm. What is the name given to Indian food cooked over charcoal in a clay oven? Danny? No? Uh, Tan- uh, Kiva? Tandoori. Ah. Mm. What is the biggest technology company in South Korea? Samsung. Oh. You finally got Peter Pan. I know. That's like the kind of phone I have. It's a hard question. They, I thought they were hard, but then I was like, maybe I'm just dumb, but they are hard. Well, maybe both. But I'm also dumb. Yeah. Okay, let's see, how, let's see if you would have gotten any of these right. Margaret Court is famous for playing what sport? Margaret Court, tennis. What kind of alcohol is in a gimlet? Uh, vodka. No. Gin. Carson City is the capital of what U.S. state? Nevada. How many state? Yes. How many stages are in a butterfly's life cycle? Um, Three. No. Four. Yes. So you would have done better, but you still would have lost. Yeah, I blame the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> you never, you can never blame Blake Lively. Okay, look at her. Download, download the Odyssey app. Log in and listen to KISW for your chance to win your share of one hundred thousand dollars. Get more info on the contest at KISW.com. dot com. Now we were following the Olympics so closely for those couple of weeks. Everything wrapped up with USA absolutely dominating in the medal count. What did we finish with? Was it 126, I want to say, total medals? It was a lot. It was a lot. Well, one guy that helped USA get that many medals is a rower named Peter Quinton, and he is from Portland. He went to the University of Washington, and we're going to chat with Peter after Pearl Jam. The Daily Mix Show. Rockaholics, we here at the Daily Mig Show were fairly glued to the Olympics this year. There was just so much excitement, and there were a lot of folks locally that were participating. And we're very lucky right now to get to talk to someone who won a bronze medal with the U.S. men's eight rowing team. His name is Peter Quinton. Good morning, Peter, and congratulations on your your bronze medal. Good morning. Thank you so much. Do you, do you, are, are Are you wearing it right now? I'm not wearing it right now. No, it's uh, it's tucked in a box. The thing is actually very heavy, so uh, I was wearing it quite a lot, and my, my, my neck honestly started to get a little bit sore. <laughs> what, what, how, about how many pounds do you think it is? I don't know, but it's probably at least 10 times heavier than any ever any other medal I've, I've ever, ever won. So it's, uh, it's pretty sizable. It's definitely a couple pounds, you know, maybe... Maybe three or four pounds. Dude, that's so awesome, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, my you. first thought was when after you win the medal, do you guys go out and party and celebrate in the Olympic Village? Like, what's, what's it like the moment when you, you, you get off the podium, you're all together? Like, are you going to get some food together, get drinks? Like, how do you celebrate? It's honestly pretty hectic the first maybe 24, 48 hours after you win a medal. And you're pretty locked in with media obligations. So uh, as soon as we go to one of a uh, medal we got added to this group chat it was called managing victory and then uh <laughs> team usa nbc all the media outlets kind of took over and we were being whisked around but we had some fun um there's a team usa house in downtown paris where we were able to go and and celebrate with our friends and family so that was a lot of fun but a lot of those first couple of days we were you know doing interviews doing today's show and things like that 
I think I would have instantly put that group chat on do not disturb, and I'm <laughs> heading on over to the bar. So let's go, guys. <laughs> We're talking with Peter Quinton, who just brought home a bronze medal with the U.S. men's eight rowing team. But you actually, you went to University of Washington, which is obviously well known for having, like, one of the greatest rowing teams and coaches. They had that documentary, didn't they? Yes. The, boy, boys, the boys in the boat. The boat yeah. Can you tell us about what it was like going to college? It wasn't a documentary movie, sorry. <laughs> going to college and being just involved in such a, you know, with so many premier athletes right here in Seattle. Yeah, obviously it's a great legacy of rowing and of other sports here in Seattle at, at the U. Um, so I felt very fortunate. I actually started, I started my collegiate career on the other side of the country at Harvard. And then I came back here um, to do a fifth year as a master's student wow. um, at the Evans School. And so that was the one year I rode for Washington, but felt very fortunate to have that. And then obviously worked with Michael Callahan, fantastic coach, and he was our coach this year for the Olympic Eight. So it's a coming full circle. While you were over in Paris, I know you were probably watching a great deal of rowing, but were there any other sports that you were able to catch while you were in Paris? Yeah, one of the great things is that rowing ends about the halfway point of the game, so after the end of week one, and so there's the whole second week where we were able to stay, live in the village, and athletes are allowed to get w one free ticket per day to any sporting event oh. if there's open seats. So we went to a ton of different things. Got to see volleyball, track, soccer, basketball, table tennis, diving. So we made the rounds, and that was honestly one of the most fun aspects of it. Did you also get to enjoy then all the great food? Because we, we heard that the Olympic Village is some great food, but, you know, it's kind of bittersweet because if you're trying to stay in your best shape, you really don't want to go nuts and eat everything. But if you have a week where you don't have to worry about rowing or competing, I got to imagine you get to enjoy some of the stuff there. Yeah, definitely. They have a lot of good food. Um, you know, the French are known for their pastry, so ate a lot of those. Maybe you saw the, the viral chocolate muffin. Did you have it? Did you eat it? I did. I had a few of those. It's quite good. Nice, nice chocolate gooey inside. Oh, Peter, yeah. we have talked Plenty to a of good food there. Yeah, we have talked to a few people, and I've asked every single person whether or not they've had the chocolate muffin, and nobody has. So, I feel finally really, we, we have closure. I feel like I always saw people eating it. They had it pretty much every meal. They had a tray of the chocolate muffins, and so I don't. I don't know how you could make it the whole two weeks without having tried at least tried it, considering <laughs> how how popular it had become. And then, I mean, I, I, I got to imagine everybody's asking if you met Snoop Dogg, but did you? I did not. No, no, I didn't, did, unfortunately. Did you have any celebrity sightings while you were over there? Because I know Snoop was there, Flavor Flav. Uh, I believe, like, Ariana Grande was there. Uh, I Seth met Terry Rogen. Cruz. Tom Cruise. Terry Cruz. That's yeah, rad. Yeah, Terry Cruz. I was at the women's basketball game. Uh, it was quarterfinal, USA against Nigeria. And it was a big group of uh, us rowers. And we were sitting near the front. And, and Terry Cruz saw us and came over and said hi, which was, which was super cool. So I know right now it's, uh, you're back in Seattle, but you're living in California. Do you have people that are expecting you to travel here and there and bring that medal so they they can see it in person? Uh, just a few places. I think I got a few few gatherings of family and friends here in Seattle, and then I'm actually heading down to Portland where I grew up uh, in a couple of days, and so do another do another round there and you know show it off to everyone who helped me help me get to this point. That was going to be my question. I don't know if that's what was going on in your mind, because yesterday we talked to a, a guy by the name of Nelson Vales who won a, a silver medal back in 1984 in cycling, and I asked him about mm -hmm. like what you're thinking when you're on that podium, and I'd love to get your perspective since you're so fresh off the podium, so you definitely could probably remember it. <laughs> you won the medal. You got it around your neck. The music's playing. Everything's going on around you guys, and you're standing there. What's going on in your mind at that moment? Uh, a lot of gratitude, um, definitely, to be there, and Felt super proud of the of the group we had in that in that boat and what we were able to accomplish this this year. Um, definitely some some hurdles to to overcome, and so it was a special moment to to cap it off on on, on the podium. And then definitely you're thinking about you know, I had a good group of family and friends who made the trip over to Paris, so it was amazing to to be there and celebrate that with them. And then obviously you're looking to get back home at some point and, and you know in, enjoy it with everyone else because there's a there's a huge village behind me that helped help me get to this point. It's awesome. Well, I hope, is I there hope. hope for four years from now for you? We'll see. I think right now I'm in, enjoying this one and going to take some downtime and then uh, reassess what my options are. But there's a good chance. Well, you keep that celebration going. Peter Quinton, yeah. bronze medalist with the U.S. Men's 8 rowing team. If people want to follow you at Peter Quinton, there's an I in there, P-I-E-T-E-R. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Quinton, congratulations and thank you so much for making the U.S. proud. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy to. Have a good one. Go team.
Well, all week long, we are proud to be giving away Metallica tickets. And if you want to win them, all you have to do is be able to name a song after only hearing one second of the chorus. If you're able to do that, you're going to win tickets to see Metallica at Lumen Field Friday, August 30th. 206-803-ROCK. We will play Hooker Shook at 920. The Daily Mix Show. This is NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. It's Gun Storage Check Week and National Suicide Prevention Month. Securely storing firearms can help prevent suicide. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to deter unwanted access. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org and enter to win a gun safe. That's GunStorageCheck.org. If you or someone you know is struggling, call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. With a VSP Individual Vision Plan, you're the one pulling the strings. Because when getting vision coverage through work isn't an option, taking care of your eye health comes with a lot of decisions that only you should make. Like choosing how to save on the lens enhancements you need, the right name brand frames for your style, and choosing your eye doctor from the nation's largest independent doctor network. Even how you enroll is up to you. Make the best decisions for your vision at the eye doctor's office, retail locations, and online with VSP Individual Vision Plans. The Daily Mix Show presents The Extreme Music Showdown Let's play Hook or Shook Please sign this waiver before we continue Thank you We'll drop a one second snippet of the hook of a song If you can't name the song Watch out, you're gonna get shook Shook. It is time to play Hook or Shook Danny will be playing one second of a hook from a song that he picked And your job is to identify what that song is and all week long, we are playing for tickets to see Metallica at Lumen Field yeah. on Friday, August 30th. Yeah. And Steve, these are not just any tickets. No, these are on the floor, man. Oh, yeah, baby. And playing for those floor tickets to Metallica today is Randy in Bremerton. Good morning, Randy. Oh, my God. Hello. What's up, Randy? What's up, guys? So you've got to get ready both. for this. Oh, yeah. I'm so ready. Bring that enthusiasm, baby. So you've got to get both songs right to win the prize. The first one, you'll be on your own. And the second one, this is where you can get shook because a member of our show at random has to get it right for you. If not, you will lose. And we'll give those tickets to Caller 9 instead. Don't make us do that, Randy. Let's see who you're playing with. Will it be me, Migs, or Sarah? Right, the wheels are spinning. Who will it land on? Just past my name, Taryn. It looks like it might. Oh, man, Randy. You can still do it, but you're paired up with Sarah. That's fine. I'm prepared. Oh, that was very nice, Randy. I He told me he told me a very nice story that he really wants to go with his son. And so I'm like, I was really hoping it was going to be me. <laughs> and well, here we are. Here we go. So, Randy, your son's a big Metallica fan? Uh, yeah, actually, he grew up listening to him because I did, and he just got back uh, not too long ago from boot camp, and I haven't had t- a chance to to do anything with him yet this summer at all. Oh, let's oh. let's so, win you these tickets, man! Yeah, let's do it. All right, Randy, here's your first clip. <laughs> we can play it again. Uh, play it again. Man, Sarah, uh, any clues? It's, yeah, it's Sarah's got some clues. Yeah. yeah. She? Do you, Sarah? Well, I'm pretty sure he's playing for tickets to, to see, see them, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So do you know the name of the artist then? That'd be so funny. Um, You're playing for tickets to see them, Randy. That's the clue. Uh, Metallica. Okay. Okay. Oh. 
I think he's about to say the title, isn't he? In, yeah. the, in the clip, fuel, that Danny. Give me fuel, give me fire. Give me fire, give me that one, try to stop. Yeah. That's exactly what I put out in my head. <laughs> yeah. I sing this song, guys. I can sing this song. You can sing it? Yes, I can. Sing it for us. Uh, well, if I... Okay. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That was perfect, Randy. Oh, I see red. Adrenaline <laughs> crash and crack my head. Yeah. I, I oh, you're... Wow. Nice. Let's, let's wrap this up with a big W, courtesy yeah. of Sarah. Sarah, yeah. you ready for your clip? You know it. <sighs> oh. Can we hear it again? Oh, I know that song. Well, somebody told me. Oh, well, you just said the song name, so. Oh, is it Somebody Told Me? Bye. Yeah. Bye, Randy. You can thank me. I, I, Bye, The Killer. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I love this song. You look like a girlfriend. Somebody told me Randy's got Metallica tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Give us one more James Hetfield. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dandy, is your, is your son around right now? No, he's at work at Walmart. He doesn't even know yet. Oh, God. I was say, that'd be awesome if we could just break it to him right now, but that he's got a job to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I could have you. I could give you guys his number. You could call him. Maybe we could call him during yeah. checking in with the Rockaholics. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Randy. Listen, he's only, yeah. We're going to put you on he's hold. Yeah, working at Walmart. Yeah, no problem. He's well, only working yeah. at Walmart. I've pooped at that Walmart. It's a Walmart nice place. doing the shopping for online shoppers is what oh, I've said. All right on. All right. Yeah, let's try to give him a call. I think that'd be awesome. Okay. All right, okay. hang on, Randy. Now, Rockaholics, if we had talked about something this morning that you would like to talk about, give us a call now. 206-803-ROCK. We will check in with the Rockaholics after fuel. Yes. The Daily Mix Show. This morning, we have received text messages and phone calls from our Rockaholics, but we have not had a chance to chat with everyone just yet. However, we are now checking in with the Rockaholics today. So call us if there's something you'd like to chime in from the show this morning, or if you have something you'd like to get off your chest, anything on your mind. 206-803-ROCK. All right, we, we have uh, Melvin on the phone. Now, earlier we were talking to Randy. Uh, Randy was on our show, and he has a son by the name of Melvin. And so Melvin doesn't know why we're calling, but Melvin, are you there? I am. Hello. What's up, Melvin? Back from boot camp, we hear. Indeed, I am. Awesome. So we were talking to your dad, and we were working with Ancestry.com. At, wow. I'm, I'm kidding. No, wow. I'm, just, oh I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Your dad, Randy's on the phone. He wanted to break some awesome news to you, if you don't mind. Let's hear it. Melvin, Melvin, I love you so much. You know this. Dude, you're going to Metallica night one on the floor. No way. Yes. Thank Kaz for this, man. You're going. That's insane. <laughs> yes. So, is it a prank call? No! No! no. no. Prank call. Yes, and your dad is James Hetfield. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! No, Melvin, you legit, your dad won him on a contest, and he said that you didn't know, so we're like, oh, let's get him on the phone and break the news to him live on the radio. So, yeah, you're going to see Metallica. Hey. <laughs> hey, watch language. Watch language. Hey, you know what? Worth it. Yeah. yeah Congrats, Melvin. And I, I'm going that night. I'm so fired up. I've never seen the newly reformed Pantera, and then, oh, then they're opening up for one of the greatest bands that you could ever see live, Metallica. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Melvin, uh, Randy said that he brought you up listening to Metallica and all that good stuff. That's pretty. I try to get my dad to listen to some of my cool rock music, but all he ever wanted to listen to like is like the cheesy, like jazz, easy listening type stuff, or you know, or like Frank Sinatra. So the fact that you have a pops that's rocking out to Metallica and you guys can rock out together, I think that's just so cool. You know, he used to sing. He used to sing "Suicide." I already died. You know, a part of uh, Cyanide from Metallica when he was little. He used to sing that? Yeah, he did. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> did other family members look at you like, ah, oh, Randy, what's going on with you and your kid? What are you teaching him? <laughs> yeah, I know. Also, Melvin, out of curiosity, what branch of the military are you in, my friend? I'm actually in the Army. Thank you awesome. so much for your service. We love you. Thank you for paying your taxes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you don't know if we are. <laughs> kidding. Well, thank Man, you both so much. On just like Dad does with the comedy stuff. <laughs> you guys have to send us a picture from the pit uh, to our Daily Migs uh, Facebook page or, or where, anywhere you can do it because we just want to see you guys and uh, post it on we our will. on our stuff. Absolutely, father son <laughs> moment. That's that's, that's gonna be yeah. a that's gonna be an awesome night. Wow. Well, Right on. Congrats, Randy. Congrats, Melvin. We'll see you at the show. And for all the rockaholics that do want to go to the show, do want to be on the floor, all this week during Hooker Shook, which we do at 920, we'll be giving away tickets to see Metallica. So plenty of more opportunities. Absolutely. Well, yesterday, you might recall, we were talking about some of the crazy Uber rides that we went on while in San Diego. Oh, yeah. There's there were- some good ones. I mean, we, you know, we, we met an Olympic, gold, uh, Olympic silver medalist. Wasn't expecting that at all. Right. Uh, we also were in one Uber that was a full-on dance party. Yeah. That yep. was pretty freaking cool. It was like a rave inside of an Uber. Had lights going and everything. But none could top this story when a reporter had to talk to a former president of the United States on speakerphone while riding in an Uber. You're going to hear what happened at 9.50. The Daily Mix Show. The Daily Mix Show. Last night on Stephen Colbert, he had Caitlin Collins on. She's from CNN. And before hosting her own show, she was a White House correspondent. And she shared a pretty insane story of what happened to her in an Uber. And this all stemmed from the moment when Biden announced that he would not be running for president. I look at my phone within 10 seconds after being in the car. Biden has tweeted out that he's, he's dropping out of the race. And I was like, uh, I need you to turn around. To your driver? And the Uber driver was like, what? And I was like, I just, can you go back there? Because I needed like a blazer. I needed my CNN badge. I run in the house. Yeah, apparently she said she was going like to a friend's birthday party for their kid. On like a Sunday afternoon when that tweet went out from Biden. She's like, oh crap. Not I gotta anymore. Go. I have a job to do. Oh gosh. I run in the house. I come back. We're on the way to CNN. And I don't have my headphones. But we wanted to know, you know, what was Trump's reaction to this major news that has totally changed the presidential race for him. I called Donald Trump. And I don't have my headphones. So I- it's also kind of crazy. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to pick up the phone and give a call to Donald Trump. She probably got a pretty impressive Rolodex in that cell phone. I have some friends that like maybe are like public figures. I'm like, I don't feel like bugging them. Maybe I'll shoot him a text. And I'll, t- I'll talk myself out of it. And she's like, yeah, screw it. Donald, got to call you. <laughs> and I don't have my headphones, so I put it on speaker in the back seat. <laughs> I'm writing down his The guy quotes. doesn't know who you are or anything. No, no. Trump's voice is like booming through. He like he knows why I'm calling and, and what quotes I wanted. The Uber driver is like turning around. He's like so confused. He's like looking at me. He's looking at my phone. He's like, is that whose voice I think that is? <laughs> and I just like sprinted out of the Uber. And like eight hours later when we got off air, I like checked the app to make sure I tipped him. And- <laughs> Hopefully he gave, I don't know, maybe he gave me one star, maybe five, TBD. That'd be kind of weird for the Uber driver he's driving. All of a sudden, that's going on in the oh background. I mean, oh that's gosh. cool and all, but not nearly as awesome as, you know, maybe a radio person making out with an Uber driver because oh they God. thought they were attractive, like our friend Tori did. So I hopped in my Uber. He reminded me a lot of my ex. I was like, oh, you're kind of cute. No. Do you want to log off and come up to my room with me? What? Wait, <laughs> did he? he we yeah. made out. <laughs> Wait, he came up to your room? Yeah. I have a most important question. How many how many stars did you give him? <laughs> five stars and a yeah. five dollar tip. Five dollar tip. He gave good tongue. Oh my god. <laughs> Fun times in the Uber rides, baby. I was just t- checking my Uber ratings to see if it went down. After you know, we used the Uber a lot oh, yeah. while we were in San Diego, and also we used it a lot while we were not sober. Yeah. And I always get worried that, like, one of us might have annoyed the Uber driver to the point where, like, my, my rating went down. Sarah? Yeah, I get it. What's your rating? It's wow. it, it's still, I think it was always hovering right around 4.9. I think it's 4.89. Is that out of five? Yeah. Okay. I don't, see, I don't take Ubers and I, because I live up north and, like, we don't have ride share programs in my neighborhood. I don't take them as often. It's just when I'm, like, randomly down in the city doing something. Right, you so- just whistle and then a horse comes right. and just jump on it, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, that's exactly my mode of transportation. <laughs> Did your rating go up or down? To be honest with you, I don't even know what my rating was, so I don't know. Wait, wait, what's your rating at now? Let's see. i got to find it. Let's go to hit your account button. Okay. Uh, account. Uh, 4.73. 4.73? Yeah. You probably use it way more. I did use it way more, and I also, again, had Sarah and my Uber a lot more than... No, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> Wait, where do I find my... 
Um, look, see, this is how little I... Oh, wait, in my account. Okay. Yeah, just click on the account button in the bottom right. 4.85. 4. Oh, so far, I'm the best Uber driver. Here's, or rider, not here's, driver. Here's an interesting thing, though. I use Lyft more than I use Uber, and I have a 4.9 on Lyft. How do you find out on Lyft? That's what I got. You got to go to your profile. Oh, my Well, what do you God. add on Uber? Ooh, I don't have Uber. Oh, 4.9, Ooh. bitches. Wow. Okay, we're all pretty good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I could improve a little. Though. I mean, Danny's easily the worst, though. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Have you met me? <laughs> Pure chaos True. in that damn Uber with that guy, I tell you. <laughs> Download the Odyssey app, log in, and listen to KISW that way, and it'll give you a chance to win your share of $100,000. It's so easy to just create a quick free account on the Odyssey app and stream to your heart's content. The more you listen, the more chances you get at winning. That is so true, and you can get all the contest info at KISW.com. When you're riding an amusement park ride, this is definitely the last thing that you want to hear. Ah! Oh, my God. The crazy thing is that that happened on one of the, ah! one of the most mellow rides you could ever ride. <laughs> We're going to tell you all about it during the Daily Mix download after Jet. The Daily Mix Show. Knowledge is power. So give us five-ish minutes and we'll give you uh, some interesting stuff you can talk about at work. This is the Daily Migs Download. A.K.A. the DMD. Here's your daily dose of doings happening in the world. And the DMD is brought to you by Palace Lawn. Before we get to anything, I do want to give a quick shout out to Danny. Not you, Danny, but a different Danny that I met over at Northwest Fitco, the gym that I go to. A better Danny? A better hitter. Oh, right. I had to say that because he came up to me and said, you're Steve, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, congratulations on winning the Dumb Olympics <laughs> to, the B- to the Daily Make Show, which I thought was, that was really freaking cool. And then he goes, yeah, I, I actually went to a batting cage to see if I was as bad as Danny since my name is Danny. And he forgot how much fun it was to hit a ball. He's like, I got a couple, not many more than Danny, but I did hit it at least. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're one step ahead of our Danny. Well, also shout out to this Danny because he really is the reason that we... We're so, we, well, we, why we were great. He was the redemption story. That's absolutely true. You know who doesn't need help in the batting cage? That's a man by the name of Victor Robles because, man, oh, man, the Mariners have been very happy with his performance since he joined the team. He's hitting 303. He's got seven doubles, three home runs in 42 games, and they've just paid him. Two year contract extension worth $9.75 million, $9 million option for the 2027 season. And not only is he a great baseball player, but he's also a great broadcaster because if you remember on Sunday night, the Mariners were on the national spotlight. And they were talking to him while he was in the outfield on ESPN. And this great moment happened when he was talking about, well, he has pet monkeys. Uh, Victor, we asked the fans if they'd like to ask you a question. Here comes one from Ben. It said, can you talk a little bit about your pet monkeys at home? (laughs) Oh, that's a great, that's a great question, man. So growing up, I was watching monkeys on TV. And I saw, like, how fun they do in jumping around. And I described myself. I, I look monkey and I, I said myself on monkeys. And I just said, sorry, guys, I have to make the play. <laughs> Stop for a second to catch a ball. <laughs> Made the catch and threw a cannon back to the infield. Wait, so do you A have, little bit too hard. Sorry, man. Do you have monkeys running around the house? No, they have their own house. Yeah. Oh. In their own house. That's where I keep my question. monkeys, too. Of course. House down the street in Puyallup. The Alice in Wonderland ride is probably one of the mellowest rides you can find at Disneyland, but not so much for this lady who was recording her journey on this ride. After the ride zigzags outside, it's supposed to have two doors that open to go back inside. And in her case, those doors did not open, and here's what happened. Ah! Oh, my God. Okay, just got smacked by the door on Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> It was kind of jumpy throughout the ride, and then when we got down to the last door, the doors open, and it went bam right on our caterpillar. Ah! Oh yeah, that's so. That is. It does have a little caterpillar on the front. I remember. Poor caterpillar. <laughs> bam. Or I think it's hurt. Ah! All right, well, anyways, the weather, 71 degrees is going to be our high today. It's going to be cloudy out. That is the DMD, and that's what's up. Our friend Ryan Castle is up next with your morning. Your morning 12 oh my God. The Daily Migs Show. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house and owning it. Having an advocate who can help you navigate negotiations, timelines, inspections, and more can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a realtor can do for you, because that's who we are. 
Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. From the mind of a two-foot-tall talking spokes puppet comes this year's biggest challenge. It's time for Bob's Dare to Compare. The hottest game show on TV that asks, what happens when you compare Bob's to the competition? You get style. You get quality. You get beeps and boops and dings and whomps. And thousands of dollars in savings. Everyone's a winner when you dare to compare with Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com to play now. Is it time to reimagine your HR strategy and accelerate your business growth? Visit insperity.com to see what's possible with the right partner by your side. Because how you HR matters.